talk to a lot of off-roaders and a lot of them have no idea that this park is down here. And on one hand, you kind of want to stay the best kept secret. But on the other hand, you know, it's such a neat place for four-wheel drives to explore. People don't even realize their vehicles are capable of tackling this kind of terrain. I just marvel at the fact that we're still allowed to drive out here. And I really feel like it's my job to be a good steward for the landscape out here. You know, treat it with respect and teach that respect to the students because, uh, you know, we all know how many wonderful locations have been locked up to four-wheel drive. Wow, that is one heck of a collection of four-wheel drive vehicles. Unbelievable. Uh, my name is Chris Wood, and I'm the uh, Director of Global Parts Sales at American Expedition Vehicles. I've been uh, in four-wheel drive for about 40 years this year. I started teaching four-wheel drive education about 25 years ago, I guess. In those days, all the training I did tended to be in the mountains. But all the while, I'd started to acquire this real uh, fascination with the dunes, just a love for driving on the dunes. And I started to wonder whether I could teach the same curriculum that I had on the Jeep trails out here on the sand. So I started my first class or two. It just sort of took off from there. And I found that the dunes actually allowed me to teach a lot of things having to do particularly with vehicle dynamics, momentum, that I was having a hard time doing up in the mountains. If I have to choose between teaching in the mountains or on the dunes, I'll take the dunes pretty much every time. If you haven't been out on the dunes here yet, you're in for a real treat. It's an absolutely spectacular place. But what's also great about Florence is that it introduces Jeepers to an entirely new way of using their four-wheel drives. Many people have never driven on the dunes before. What's gonna blow you away about this trip is how incredibly capable these vehicles are out there and how much fun you're gonna have. We're gonna teach you how to do that today. Anyway, ultimately, Everything is designed to be very safe. I promise you, none of the instructors here have anything to prove. They're here to make sure you have a good time, keep you safe, and send you home with some nice new skills that you can enjoy anytime you want to. It's really important when you're teaching to make it very sequential, very progressive. You need to start out with very simple, fundamental skills in the lecture talk about them in concept and where you'll apply them, and then gradually introduce those concepts to reality. No matter which recovery gear you buy, you absolutely need to make sure that it is properly marked with the working load limit and the minimum braking strength. It's my policy to teach vehicle recovery before vehicle driving, because I find that students have a lot more confidence when they drive but they already have an idea of what they can recover from should they get into a pickle. Plus, what's great is if you need to demonstrate a recovery, you can get a vehicle stuck out here just like that. I try to ramp people up gradually on winching, you know, talk about the concepts, identify the names of the various parts of the winch, and then we gradually get them on to the winch, hands-on, uh, under the watchful eye of instructors. A lot of times we all know how to use a winch, but we don't talk about that communication point about working with someone and the hand and arm signals that go along with that. So this is a good time for get everyone on the same page. That's another one of those areas, you know, when they when they do it for a couple of times, they just students just start glowing. Winches are wonderful tools and in the right hands they can do incredible things. The first exercise that we're going to do today is a backing exercise. There's a stretch of forest road uh, that goes on for about maybe a quarter of a mile. And we're going to back down it using left hand at top dead center on the steering wheel and using only our mirrors. And if you have a passenger, the passenger plays policeman to make sure the driver doesn't cheat and start using the backup camera. Wait. Oh, I wasn't supposed to do that. Can you pick up your speed, everybody? Wolfrey guys are looking fantastic. Yeah, I agree. I see good control. Not too slow, not too fast. Keeping the wheels rolling and uh, good directional stability. It's funny, it's, it has just kind of taken on a life of its own. I mean, I think originally out here I had maybe five students show up, and, and today we're looking at 20 vehicles, 10 of which are the students and 10 of which, of which are uh, assistants. It just blows me away the way it's grown. And, and all of that, despite the fact that I do it in February, which on the coast here usually spells really nasty weather. It's fun, man. <laughs> Beautiful. Part of the country, too. Yeah. First time here. It's 
great when you have all the people around you. Always yeah. less intimidating that way. Okay, everybody, we're going to begin a failed hill climb exercise here. Now, this is where you'll use your mirrors and your left hand top dead center, just like we did on the backing exercise. Of all of the dune driving techniques I teach out here, the failed hill climb is probably the most important one. What we do is we have them drive up the hill, stall the vehicle on purpose, and then back it down. Put your left hand top dead center, shift into reverse, and then without looking over your shoulder or relying on your camera, keep your eye on the horizon, use your two mirrors right and left, and just back down very gradually. Watch your speed, use your brakes mildly. By mastering that failed hill climb, one, it builds a ton of safety as they drive further on in the dune, but it also just gives them a lot of confidence. I guess I get the biggest kick out of just watching the people come in here, maybe never having driven the dunes, and sometimes even having a lot of apprehension about it. Yeah. Watching them just going from timid to absolutely excited and uh, feeling confident, you know, and taking on terrain that uh, probably never would have even considered driving on before. We're down here at uh, Winchester Dunes today. Uh, we're going to take a class out, learn some more driving skills. Uh, the dunes are quite a bit taller than Florence, so it's going to be a challenge and uh, it's going to be a good day out, having a good time. So. Okay, so we'll go a little slow across here. Just practice uh, keeping your momentum, letting the car slip a little to the side and uh, have some fun with it. We're going to take you up uh, one of the uh, most scenic fingers uh, of the dune park out here. All right, folks, when you get to that section, just put your foot in it because uh, you're going to need that momentum. That was great momentum, looking good. Yeah, that's a textbook. Most people learn their spotting through their friends and maybe their clubs. Maybe their hand signals are just a little finger pointing in front of a, of a jacket, you know. As professional trainers, we want big, bold signals that are very easy to identify in all conditions. We are going to do a blindfolded spotting drill where the driver actually drives the vehicle eyes closed, taking direction from the passenger, who in turn is taking direction from a ground spotter. This is pretty weird doing this. When I went through the first time, I had my vehicle completely sideways with the cones. I don't know what I was doing, I think. How was that? It was great. Was it a little weird? A little weird. <laughs> <laughs> but just like with all the other side hills, if you begin to stall, just make sure you steer abruptly downhill and throttle on. Momentum just gives you a lot of options. It's generally a lot easier to slow down than to get the speed back. I have to give a plug to AEV because they have made this class free of charge for every student over the years. I never dreamed I'd have 40 years in this sport when I first got started. I never even dreamed I would have 27 years in it occupationally, but it's been a really great ride and allowed me to meet a lot of nice folks. We get people driving in from Texas, the Yukon, Mexico, we even have people flying from England. I say this in all humility, it's a very good class for people who want to come into a friendly, relaxed, professional atmosphere and just learn and enjoy a really neat and unique uh, location.